Knock yours out. We can do that now. Mine should take no less, no more than 10 minutes. Okay. okay. Why don't you go ahead and, and, and jump in. Um, you're on team, so you can share your screen, right? That was our plan. Um, yeah, let me see if I can figure that out. Let's see. So can you see it now? That was a lot faster than the Corps of Engineers. Yes, I can see it, Gary. Uh, okay. Thanks, Daniel. Shane, you can see it in, your, in the room, right? Yes, we're good. <laughs> Nathan's not real happy about the reverse line. Let's see if I can start it. So, Daniel, can you still see it now? Yes, it's the full slideshow yeah. now. Okay, sounds good. Um, will you be going ahead to the Yes, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for letting me kind of do this from up here in the Athens area. Um, but I just want to kind of go over just some of the ideas I've kind of thought through. Um, we realize a lot of our issues with, especially down in that area, our non-point source pollution. I mean, as well as up here from sediment, from the septic systems, from runoff stormwater management, those type of things. So what I want to do is just kind of talk through some of those. Um, obviously, from my position here at UGA, I don't have the ability to do a lot of the implementation stuff, especially related to the municipal. Um, a lot of what I'm, I'll show you in the next couple of slides is education, outreach, trying to make citizens of that Sewanee Satilla area more aware of how we pollute our creeks and rivers and what they can do in their own homes, in their backyards, on their farmland to potentially reduce some of that um, non point source pollution getting into the creek. As an example, just last night here in Oconee County, we got a, um, an alert from the um, officers, the police officers, saying that one of our local parks was shut down. Found out this morning somebody had flushed the diaper down the, down the toilet, which then stopped up the whole sewer system, which then backed up onto the playing fields and such as that. So that non-point source education sometimes goes, I think, a lot further. So I'll go ahead and go, but a lot of, again, the three or four things I would propose here to put in a seed grant are more of the education outreach um, aspects. So the first one would be the EDU-1, promote conservation practices. I mean, that's from agriculture, that's from small farms, that's from homeowners. So you see some of the pictures down on the slide from using drip irrigation. So educating folks on what drip irrigation is. That second slide, the one um, with the bucket and all the fittings, a couple years ago we did a presentation, or I did a series of presentations where we had workshops, a six to eight hour workshop, where we went through the whole irrigation design process so that farmers, um, homeowners would better understand, one, what the irrigation system is, two, how to design irrigation systems, and three, what all went into managing those irrigation systems from a work conservation standpoint, as well as making sure they had the right irrigation system. What you see there on that upper right hand picture is a bucket of material so as part of that training we i would go through and give the groups of people that five gallon bucket with all the things needed to um, assemble a drip irrigation system so they got that hands-on effect of hey this is how we put these irrigation systems together so they learn more about that and then the bottom picture there is looking at from a work conservation standpoint um, and work quantity standpoint doing education outreaches, specifically probably with our county extension agents, showing them how to do it. So then they can do that in the counties there in the Sewanee Satilla Basin, how to do irrigation audits. Um, so we're looking again at work quantity issues there. So if homeowners and businesses know how to do irrigation audits, as well as irrigation companies, making sure irrigation systems are working properly will help save that water as well as not pollute from a non-point source pollution if you've got some sprinklers that are going bad or whatnot. So then the next one would be EDD2, um, stormwater education program. When I was there in Tifton a lot, we worked with a lot of the farmers doing conservation tillage practices. So doing some kind of workshops, management, um, field days, 
looking at conservation tillage. There's a couple farms there in the Sewanee Centilla that we could potentially monitor those farms that have or are not using conservation tillage now, so using conventional tillage systems, measuring the sediment runoff, measuring the non-point source um, runoff from those fields, and then trying to incorporate with those farmers conservation tillage and then measuring that again, um, that runoff, that sediment removal rate, and then showing the benefits of that conservation tillage. So again, through field days and such as that. And then the bottom right hand corner you see there, using pervious pavements in those um, locations, more of the urban areas, potentially even in some of the rural areas, to get that water to go back into the ground, get it back infiltrated into the ground in these urban centers so that we can get that work back into our groundwater table. Again, this would be potentially working with Angela and that group down at um, Valdosta through some of their MS4 programs and such as that, but really doing the education on what does a pervious pavement look like. Um, and then rain gardens, uh, I know there's some rain gardens around um, Valdosta and that group, but you know, what's the benefits of rain gardens from homeowners to get that water from going into the creeks um, directly, but um, going into those creeks indirectly, what's the benefits of them and such as that. The third part then would be education on septic systems. Again, septic is, um, especially down there with you guys in that sandy loam soil, um, if we have malfunctioning septic systems and um, that water, that liquid that goes out into then the distribution system, can then um, go down quicker into that surficial aquifer system, which then is connected to our creeks and rivers down that area. So you can get some of that fecal coliform, that E. coli, get into the creeks and rivers. So doing some education on septic system maintenance. And what you see here on the screen is in the upper left-hand corner, um, a couple years ago, we put together a flushable, non-flushable game that we typically play with kids. Um, at water festivals. So Valdosta has like an MS4 for their education purposes as a water festival or something like that. Um, we can take this game. I'm working on trying to put some of these together for our county extension agents so they can actually do um, a flushable, non-flushable game with students, adults at different events. So we have a third grade ag day here in Watkinsville, so those type things, I know working with some of the NRCS and the GACD folks, they're using this game right now in some of the school systems to just show the kids specifically, you know, what are those things you should flush and not flush? It's probably hard to see on there, but you notice there's nine things that are flushable. is water, pee or poo, and paper toilet paper. And then the cautionary things are those things we, we use around the house, house cleaners and such as that. Non-flushables are, at least on this game, are kid-friendly things that are non-flushables. So, um, you know, nuts and bolts and little toys and flushable wipes and such as that. But what we do is we'll put all those on the table and then let the kids put them in there. And to me, I get just as much education from the adult side watching the kids put it in there because the adults will stand there and go, now which one did this do and where does this go and oh, are you supposed to flush that or are you not supposed to flush that? So it helps from that viewpoint and yes, it's a game, but it helps I think the adults as well as the kids understand better what we should be flushing and then when the adults have questions, then I can go a lot more into the education outreach aspect of it is why does this not tear down and why does this not break down? The picture you see there on the right then is a um, jar test apparatus. So it, it has the stirs on there. So what we use with this, we put those one liter beakers in there and we'll put toilet paper, uh, paper towels, flushable wipes, and we stir that for 30 seconds or so. And then we show the adults, um, as you see the mom there behind the little girl in the blue, um, that toilet paper will break down in a hurry. So in a sewer system, a municipal system, a septic system, that toilet paper breaks down really quick, but all those other things I mentioned don't break down. And then so when they get into your septic tank or into the municipal system, those are dollars that we have to spend from tax dollars in the municipal side, or we have to get those tanks flushed out. If we have to get, I mean, pumped out, if those clog up, the, the distribution system, then we have problems in our backyard with septic, um, 
and then that can lead to not from source pollution. And then the bottom left hand corner there is I've got a model um, tank, a septic tank, so then I can do some education and we've got videos on my website that show how this works and so we can then show folks how septic systems work, how it can clog up and such as that. Some of the other ones then um, that we can still do again is the NPSA 1, their soil erosion um, reduction. So again, this is conservation tillage, trying to promote conservation tillage, having that residue on the ground, causing that infiltration to increase, reducing that erosion. And so part of all these, I think, is between you guys working on the new revision that just came out and the one in five years, potentially even going out and holding field days, having um, different events that you guys could be a part of to see how some of these um, implemented practices work in the field. Um, so as you start to think about the new revision in three or four years from now, you know, how are these actually impacting the swan satilla there? And then the last one is promote aquifer friendly land uses, the GW2. Again, how can we do education on agricultural practices or urban practices to get that water from running into our creeks and rivers, reducing our flooding, but then also getting down into that aquifer system. We send base feeds and base flow into our creeks and rivers. So we got that steady stream going back into our creeks and rivers and we reduce them that flooding. And so with that, that's all I've got, um, Shane. And if I can figure out how to stop this, I will. Okay, any questions for Dr. Hopkins? Think about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, come out. <laughs> Mic drop. I wonder what it will happen to Gary. He's gone. He just got a higher job. <laughs> I will put up the um, information. There's one little twist to the C grant uh, cycle, which is. Um, they actually have a portal this year, so it's an online portal, and you can see the um, the link there, webportalapp.com, and it's it's on the Joy DPD website where the water plan is and the seed grain. So just be aware. Um, you can work with me. That's probably Gary coming back in. Maybe Danielle can let him back in. Um, you need to have your free application by October the 17th, and I can help you set that up and coordinate that with Jack. Um, okay, Shane. Yeah, I was buying you some time, Gary. Um, Sorry about that. I, I, I hit the stop. I hit the turn yourself off and stuff to stop share button. So, but I think that was all the slides I had, all the ideas. Um, so, if anybody's got any questions, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them. Yeah, so any questions for Dr. Hawkins from the council? Gary. Yes, sir. When did you go to Athens? Do what? When did you go to Athens? I moved up here in January of 15. <laughs> you've, been, you've been gone from Hipton a long time. I, I, my truck still knows the route down there, but yeah, I've been, I've been up here since January of 15. Okay. I'm glad you talked to me. I remember you. I remember Mr. Gray. Yeah, I, I moved up here in 15, but like I said, my truck GPS still moves me down there every so often. Okay, that's a good thing. Yeah, I agree. All right, so Anybody else? Anything else? Or do you want to break some lunch? Yeah, let's break some lunch. Thanks, Gary. Good to see you. You're welcome. Y'all have a good rest of the day. and. Um, it, Shane, if y'all have anything, Mr. Um, Scott, anybody, just let me know. All right. Thank you, Gary. All right. Thanks, guys. Here's what we'll do. We're going to break for lunch, and we'll come back at 12.50. Um, they're going to bring our lunch in for us, so it's a plated lunch. And uh, for the online folks, you guys can come back on at 12.50. That would be greatly appreciated.